So his official title from World Financial Group is executive chairman. But as World System Builder, we call him head coach as he coaches us through the national campaign for financial literacy and our revolution. But I am very lucky to call him my dad. Please help me welcome Swan Nguyen. Good afternoon uh, to uh, people in the East Coast, but here in California, it's still uh, in the morning. But uh, it's just such an honor for me to be here on this platform to be able to share with you our story. Um, and first of all, I just want to thank Sachi Koto for such a nice introduction. But you know, uh, the, the talk from, from Scott Harrison it really, really uh, uh, inspired to the people like me uh, who, who who always admire people who live their life with a purpose. So, um, and, and uh, I'd like to use this opportunity to thank every one of you, the people in this national campaign for financial literacy. You are a special kind of people. You know, among all the uh, challenge we are facing in this moment in time, with, uh, among the, all the darkness, here the light, you know, you shed a wonderful light on the horizon for family people who is right now in confused and worried about the future. By getting together, putting this event together, and, and for a great cause to help family to be able to um, be seen through this, this uh, window of time and give them hope and dream for the future, as well as uh, Pour your heart and your soul and your finance together uh, to help the relief efforts for family. So myself, uh, I'm in this business for 35 years, and I uh, I come to this industry in a very very um, similar circumstance with many other people. It comes to a point in my life that I need to do something better for for my future. You know we. Uh, I was very blessed to be in this country, and you know, this is a, such a, a dream come true for a person like me coming from where I come from. I left Vietnam during the last day of the Vietnam War, and was able to escape and run to this uh, wonderful country. And there, you know, I start my new life and you know, set up a family. You know, um, I have a job, and so is my wife. I work with. Uh, a nonprofit organization uh, when I joined this organization, which is the International Rescue Committee. This is a very rewarding work where I find a sense of purpose for me to be able to be able to, to going out and help people in need at the time. But as I going out um, every day helping those people, and by the time I get home, there's another family also need me a lot. I, I could not provide enough for them, which is my own. You know, seeing my wife have a full-time job, take care of the kid, and, as, and then, you know, with the financial stress that we have, uh, we consider ourselves is not a lavish spender, but somehow, some way, we only behind the bill, to the point that my wife took another extra job. So now, with two and a half income, we're still keeping up with the bill. So um, I remember when I married to my wife, I told her that one day I make $7 an hour. You don't have to go to work anymore because at the time we make about three, three bucks an hour. But over the year, by the time I make 7 bucks an hour, she still go to work and $10, $15, and so on. And this has bothered me uh, to put so much uh, in family. I feel so helpless sometimes. So I came by, by circumstance, I was able to get into this industry at a way, at a moment in my life that I really want to find an answer or maybe a way out for my situation. Because at the time, as hard as we try, you know, uh, there's something challenging with our, our finance. Uh, we have a Check a, checking account with a local uh, bank here in California, and they have a m very good feature they call overdraft protection, which means every time that you know we we don't have enough fund in 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 the checking account, then the um, the credit card would cover those uh, uh, those those those, those shortfall. So that thing built up among other credit card I have, and 
this is my problem. You know, uh, got to have my elbow. Uh, I'm looking for a solution. And, and uh, you know, at the point of my life, I, I have $2,000 in saving. But all the credit card and debt, I, I have about $10,000. And the average interest rate charged on that 16%. And they keep paying that thing and never go away. And even though we try to get more source of income, it still cannot solve that problem. So one of the first goal is how to get out of that. And here, when I come to this industry, this is what I find out. With 16% interest, and if to apply to $10,000 using some simple financial calculator, I find out I have to, for, for the monthly, mon, a mon, minimum mon, monthly payment, I pay about $233 a month. This is, this is a scary part. As I find out, it's, it took me about 338 months, which is a whopping 28 years, to be able to finish uh, this, this balance. And, and this is the troubling thing for me because you know, um, bill is always a ma major problem in our family. I, every month, I see my wife; she's an accountant and she tries to balance the budget, balance the checkbook. And it's a pain to see her, she go through that one. But with the same, same uh, information I received from this industry, and and with a simple mathematical change. I find out if I take $2,000 to pay off uh, some of the debt, and you know, I, now with just $8,000 left on the balance, and I still apply the same $233, this loan would be able to be pay off in 47 months or, or less than four years. So for the first time in my life, I see the answer of my problem that I get, can get out of, of that. And then, and then looking further with this financial education, I also realized that if I just make some small change in my habit, just if I can save $10 now, a, a, a day, these are my biggest concerns that how will my future will look like. I'm the kind of person who, you know, I love to take care of my family, especially my mom and my sibling. And, and, but, but you know, I, and, and my children, but I never want to be, when the time I'm retired, they have to take care of me, especially my kid. So retirement is always my concern, but I now see no hope. But now with financial education, just $10 a day, and if I apply that $10 a day, $300 a month, in an um, in 8% rate of return estimate, in 30 years, I could accumulate $447,000. And that's a big relief for me because I think the answer for me is watching what I spend. If I can cut out some of those things, maybe some eat out, uh, some coffee, and many other things, I see how doable it is. And then the same time, I see if my wife also does the same thing, she saves another 10 bucks a day, which is $600 a month, I can see myself become financial dependent because that would accumulate to about 894,000. And that is what we have been looking for a solution for us. And retirement become possible for us. So, uh, and furthermore, as I get into this industry, I begin to learn so many simple um, things about building my own future, building a financial foundation. You, you look to, you know, uh, when you build a house, you never know how, how good it is when, until you face some challenge like earthquake or tornado. And you, by, and if the house is standing, you realize that it's a good house with a good foundation. And the same thing with your financial house. Your financial house, whether it's strong enough when you weather some strong wind, like this time. So, so, I begin to understand about building a proper foundation for my financial health. It starts with proper protection because besides from protect your car, your house, 
you need to help protect your health, your disability, as well as your life if something would happen to you. And then you have got to clean up your debt. And, uh, and especially the other important foundation is that you're going to have a good emergency fund because things happen, lay up, uh, uh, challenge that uh, affect your income like this pandemic or something break down in the middle. You got to be able to save enough for that, 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 that those events. And last but not least, you got to learn how to save and especially to invest your money. So, so, so I have a blueprint, a blueprint to build a strong foundation. And through financial education, I also learned something very magnificent to my own knowledge. For the first time in my life, at 36 years old, I see something called a wealth formula, which means that money plus time plus or minus rate of return minus inflation and minus tax. This is what you have left is your wealth. So all of a sudden, I dawned on me I used to think that the, the rich people have some secret thoughts or something they were born with privilege or they have in the different world with their own advice. I find that everybody is the same thing. They know a wealth formula, which I know now. And, and all we have to do is just increase the plus and reduce the minus, and we can increase the, their wealth. It's army with that. I also don't to. The real solution, first of all, is you're going to make money. Everybody make money. But that is not enough. That's just the first step. I learned that make money is not that critical. Whatever money you save from the money you make is more important. Two people make the same money, but some spend too much, sometimes spend more than that. And the other one who save is the one who save, the one who keep. That's important. But saving money is still not enough. Most people save, but you know, imagine you save money in the place that give you 1%, but inflation like 2 or 3%. You don't, you don't save money. You're losing money. So you've got to learn to the next step is to learn how to grow your money. You learn to how to invest your money. It needs education. It needs discipline. And last but not least, you need also to learn to, to protect your money. So, so now with the... The principle you learn from this side, you can begin to apply to that formula, increase more money, and building your wealth. So armed with that, me and my wife was able to have confidence with a strong financial foundation and learn how to build our future. So financial education can lead to financial dependence. And this is what we all want to be. But this is a reality. You know, I know pandemic is the biggest challenge for every one of us to think it right now. But I want to remind you, there is other crisis is going on with our life. The pandemic, hopefully, and I believe that, will be over. But there I mean, will be other kind of challenge coming ahead. But always and brewing bigger and bigger right now in this country, it's a retirement crisis. You know, million and million of American and Canadian are gonna face a very tough future for their retirement. Because the three biggest pillars of your retirement is in question or in is or broken. First is personal saving. The US and also Canada, we are not very good on saving. Very few people save, and if whoever save, we don't save enough. And second thing, pension from the company. 20, 30 years ago, when it comes to this country, it was the norm. You work for the company, they give you pension, and you, re you work 25, 30 years, and you get the pension plan. That thing is, is gone. Very few companies nowadays offer that. And last but not least, a government program like Medicare, Social Security, or in Canada, RSP, with the growing population and the tax base that is less 
government going to find very difficult to be able to fund this program in the future. So retirement crisis is the crisis we are all facing. And it's coming very soon, and we have to address that thing. The other crisis is the debt crisis. You, you look to the U.S. Co economy in 2019, which is robust and one of the best year we have. And when we produce 21 trillion, the number one economy in the world, however, the problem is that our national debt isn't bigger than our, uh, our, our, what we produce. We owe 23 trillion. Not, uh, this is a national debt, but who, who own it? Us, the taxpayer. We have to pay for that. You know, currently we pay roughly about $300 million a year into these, uh, I the interest of this debt by our, our own stack. Right. Some people estimate that this, this debt maintenance payment eventually, in the next few years, will surpass our defense budget. And on top of that, besides the national debt that we have to pay, we also own $14 trillion of consumer debt all the credit card and other loan and other obligation we have. And, and with this year, with the, I don't think things going to be better. It, it, it looks more glimmer than the picture of 2019. And last but not least is the spending crisis. I never seen such a, a spending uh, habit like what we have lately. When I first came to this country, I remember when I had a, a kid and we, we took them to a birthday party. It was simple things. We take them an ice cream parlor, stick a candle with a bunch of their friends, blow the candle, and take them to the park. It was a wonderful time. Nowadays, this is like a big celebration, a big party for the birthday party. You know, with all the fancy stuff going on, and, 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 and you know the challenge that as a person go out and working with people for financial education, I find most of these parents, although they're willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on this lavish party, but many of them do not have even a thousand dollars in saving for their children's financial education future. I see a young man or woman begin to get out of life with a lot of student debt, debt and then they get married. <laughs> Boy, what a, what a, 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 a um, event that they put on. And reflect when, just about a few decades ago, during my time when we get married, we have a good ceremony at the church, and then we have a good reception. It costs us a very manageable amount. Today, I see so many kids going to, the, so many young people, after the college debt, the marriage put them in more debt. You talk about bachelor party, bachelor uh, bachelorette party. Uh, um, talk about the uh, the perfect cake and and different kind of dress and destination wedding, on and on and on. People nowadays, there's some saying, which is quite very interesting. They spend the money they don't have and buy the thing they don't need to impress the people that they're not necessarily like. And, and this is the challenge of this country. We spend too much to the point that right now, got aff you know, as a consumer, we raise the debt crisis and got to affect our retirement. And also, we have no emergency saving. 44% of Americans right now, and they're seeing similar uh, things in Canada, could not cover an unexpected expense of just 400 bucks. And this is. This is sad. Living in, we are living, it's ironic that we live in the wealthiest country in the world, but we always have money problems. We can work hard all our life, but we retire poor. We do so much to raise our kids just to see them finish college with a lot of debt, and that unfortunately become a way of life. You know, when I was, a couple of years ago, I see a bubble sticker say, yeah, I owe, I owe, I, and off to work I go. And it, it's, it's really hit me hard because most of us go to work every day, Monday to Friday, and go on with our life year after year. You know what? 
but we go to work for to pay our bill, to keep up, to pay our debt. That's why we believe so much about financial education. Financial education changed my life, changed my family life. Through financial education, we was able to get out of debt, and we was able to start some saving, and we were able to apply those principles to build a strong financial foundation, uh, financial foundation for our future. Because what you don't know may cost you, and you can become your own money manager. You know, I used to think that it's very difficult to, to, to uh, this um, financial service with a lot, a lot of professional. Well, it's not the truth. You can learn. You can learn how money works. It's not as complicated, it's not as simple, uh, as, as, as difficult as you think. And so you can become a mon um, your own money manager. Your future is, don't put your future in the hand of, of your employer your company, your union, or your government. It's not in the hand of your bank or your broker. The future must be in your hand. You see, this is your life. This is your money. If you don't control your money, money is going to control you. If you don't control your debt, that will control you. It's your future. you got to control your future. If not, you're going to have no future. Um, so be financially educated. You never, you never be totally free until you're financially free. So uh, I like to, to send a very um, positive note because this financial education campaign, the people in this community, the people we call part of this campaign and of national uh, literacy campaign for for financial education, we totally believe that the future can be built, the future can be better. I, we are very optimistic about the future, which is the largest economy in the world. This country, and, and North America, Canada, will overcome. But five years from now, five years from now, when we face another challenge, maybe a different kind of form of crisis, or another pandemic may happen. Are you going to be in this situation right now? Or are you well prepared? Because, you know, I always look at that. Whatever you do today is a result of what your action about five years ago. And whatever five years from now is going to be depend on what you decided to do today. So you can build a better future now. So uh, we want to sum up with a few things. And this is some suggesting, you know, um, in, in our community. First and foremost, you must understand how money works. Because if you don't understand it, you can, money is a good tool. And it, it will work. The tool of money will work for the people who know how to use it. And you cannot spend all your life learning 10, 20, 30 years to get an education, just learn how to make money. And yet, you, you, you got to invest some of your time to make money working for you. And second thing, you got to have a financial goal and have a plan. Because most people don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. Yeah, it's, it's amazing people have put weeks to prepare for a birthday party, month of vacation. Some of them put years planning for their wedding. We are pretty good about planning on things like spending. But few of us ever sit down and put out one or two hours, or a, a, a few hours to learn about some basic principle of financial education. That's why it's so critical that you have to understand how many work. We have we offer free workshop and financial education. There is no excuse not to learn. Kofi Annan, the, uh, the Secretary of the United Nations, said something very profound. You're never too young to lead, but you're never too old to learn. 
You know, the last time we learned cannot be just from, 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 from school. You know, as an as a adult, we continue to have to learn because it's our family that's on the line. We can never be too old to learn. You got to learn how to cut down on unnecessary expense. I totally believe you can save a $10 a day. I totally believe that if you have what you, what you expand, buy the thing you need, not the thing you want. You know, by looking to the thing that you really, really, uh, you're budgeting, you can cut down a lot of unnecessary expense. I believe that to a large majority of people right now in financial trouble, you don't have to be. All you have to do is just start watching your expenses. And you can be able to find the money to take care of your children's education and also to take care of your future financial foundation or financial retirement. You got to learn how to reduce your debt and your liability because the interest on your debt and your liability will, will eat away your own future. You know, Typical American, last time I know, in your lifetime, typical, you're probably going to pay roughly about $280,000 on just interest alone. Imagine those money is put into good use for saving, for, 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 for investment. What your future is going to look like? Just reduce your debt and your liability. And there is a plan, there's an education, there's a class to learn how to do those things, just like it happened to me. And Number five, you got to learn to increase your cash flow. You know, we, <laughs> the, uh, the old generation, my parents always say, you know, you work hard and you're going to be rich. It's not going to happen like that. Uh, it's not always true, though, because I find that around me, there's so many hardworking people, but they have no money. So, so the reason is that most of us will learn to be hard worker. We always rely on one source of income. You can, you can find another source of income. You, you can have a job and have another business, or you're going to try something different. You gotta, this is what applies to my family. The day I begin to get to a different source of income, to go to certain business, especially this business, I will be get, to make some serious money on a part-time basis. That would allow me to be able to do a lot of things because you know, my income eventually from a part-time basis in the financial industry, within the first year, it grew to almost the same amount I make on a full-time basis. And the second year in the business, by, by working in this industry, I was able to double my part-time income than the, uh, the, the amount that I make on a full-time basis. That's why it also give me the freedom to leave my job by the third year and being on this campaign full-time for the past many years. And last but not least, is embrace change and expect to succeed. I love this thing so much because life always change. Either you embrace it, the change, and be with it, or you're going to be left behind. So you, gotta, you can change. You can change it. You can change your thinking. You can change your habit. Not only you can uh, change the way you think, you must also change your habit. Two things that can make a great change to people's life are the book you read and the people you meet. The more you spend time with the wrong crowd, you probably won't be right. If you want to be successful, move to a better environment. Be around a better group of people. Ask yourself with successful people. If you do know how to tell your kid, don't hang around with a certain crowd of their friend. You know what to do for yourself. You know, they're saying that you are the reflection. Your life will be just like five, six people that you hang around with. You hang around the people who is uh, drinking, you probably drink a lot. You hang around gambler, you may end up gambling. If you hang around the healthy kind of people, you're probably going to be healthy. And you hang around the people who want to become successful, chances are you will be successful. Because life will turn out the way you expect it to turn out. When you expect something, 
and you, you, you put into action and be the right kind of person, you can be successful. So financial, independent. I used to think it's, it's a dream. Actually, it's not. It's just a priority. You put your priority right. You will begin to look into what you can be able to do. You see, many people right now in America, every time there's something challenge, they always look into a problem or maybe something they cannot control. But actually, they can become financial independent. If they accept and embrace that concept, they'll be courageous. You know, once you be able to see that, yes, I can become successful. I, become, I can become moving from financial insecurity to begin to become financial secure, and then after that, working to, to work my finance, myself independent. That's what I do. We don't become something overnight. Everything in your life, you win, you lose by the degree. You know, it takes me so long for many years to come to the point that at low point in my life, but also it takes me that long to be able to make a comeback. Okay? So winning or losing by degree, and you can start now. Financial education is the first step. I believe financial education so much because financial education, universal education in the last century changed my family life. My parent was not educated. My father had three-year education. My mother is illiterate. But they were able to understand the important education. They, they put all their life for the children to be educated. And I was one of those people who benefited from that. But I think this 21st century, financial education, universal financial education, will lead our society, our world, into financial secure and financial independent. We don't have to accept that is a way of life anymore. We can see, you know, this COVID-19 uh, challenge time, it's raised us question about what life would be in the future. I think this is a good way for us to start, to start because you can start with knowledge. Knowledge is power. And with this, armed with this education, you can build a strong financial future. Thank you so much. And we have a full program in the afternoon. Please stay tuned with us.